searching podcasts for Dave and one more time. We are living in a country where a U.S. congressman pulls a fire alarm to keep from having to work. And then wants his crime excused because he didn't think pulling a fire alarm would set off a fire alarm. Ah, yes. The do you realize how truly stupid I am defense. Pure genius. These guys ought to try it. This is Dave and Juan. And three. Number two. One. Woohoo! Pop and circumstance, baby. Got it, man. America. Hey, America, how you doing? For different reasons, more than ever. You. Yeah. You're welcome, are. man. Welcome. You are welcome. Uh, I don't want to say it took a lot of work to get here. It took a lot of work to get through the week. Well. Today's not too bad. Today's not too bad. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm Dave. I'm Juan. And this is David Juan. More time. Thank you. Where we Thank promise you. you not to pull any fire alarms in the middle of this as our congressional. Yeah. People yeah. For some reason. I am. Um, to those of you, again, that those of you that choose wisely, I would often say to avoid the news. Yeah, it, it really is. It's it, it's one of the keys uh, to the at keys least to happiness, term. man. At least short-term happiness. Now, what I'm saying is, you can't you, you can't stick your head in the sand and 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 go hide forever, because reality. But, it, but it's good every now and then to just unplug, don't pay attention to the news. So, but Juan and I, unfortunately, are forced to to pay attention. Um, yeah, somebody's got to. So we, I don't know, but we've got uh early voting for the gubernatorial and all oh, the wait, state wait, wait. elections drop it. Hang on, here. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hang on, man. We're like that we didn't we barely went two feet down one bunny trail. Oh uh, well, and, you know, and we're talking politics. Yeah, okay, but the politics was what you were referring to. Was, yeah, I don't really know about this. I just know the dude pulled the fire alarm. I don't know much about it. So, so there's voting and, and that's the other thing. If you are trying to pay attention our government is a joke it's long been a joke um i don't know necessarily that it's coming unraveled right now i think it's been unraveled for a long time <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just you, i think it's more and more evident right they don't play by the rules and and nobody calls anybody on anything like but like whatever ideas you had about uh back in the day uh what was it schoolhouse rock and you know mm -hmm. how a bill becomes a law and we all, all the things you learned about the balances of power and the administrative, the legislative, the Congress, that, that's all, that's a crock. It's a nice idea. It used to be around. None of it really holds anymore. Um, and just like the laws and the rules that they're supposed to go through to spend our money, because it's because it's your money, y'all. You yeah, pay. Don't ever forget that. You pay for everything. Yeah. And even the, the if the government it's not, has no money. No, that they don't take from you. In fact, they got no money. Period. They get thirty-one trillion. They, they, the same people that ran thirty-one trillion in the hole are the people that, right, want to tell you how to, you know, what car to drive and how to live your life. And but so none of that stuff uh, apparently holds anymore. Well, well, there's a handful of folks. Uh, it just happens to be on the on the uh, the GOP side that are saying no, 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 no. We got to. It's now or never. We we gotta we gotta call things. Uh, we gotta call things out. We gotta break things down. We gotta fund what needs to be funded. But this nonsense of we wait until the last minute, threaten a shutdown, and then just throw all yeah, the, the money. In the we world. haven't had a full like an annual budget in ever forever. It, 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 in, in ever and the, and the trick they've been playing over the past few years. They told the lie back uh, for the COVID stuff where they, they just blew up the budget, right? They just they went to a level of spending that even as bad as we were and we were awful, they went beyond that. And now they're just like, hey, that's the new norm. So it's 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 a mess. And there's a handful, of, maybe a little more than a handful, but there's a handful of folks who are saying, no, we're going to fight. We're not going to pass this. We don't care if the... Ooh, shut the government down. That's the other yeah. funny thing, too. You know what worries about the government being shut down? 
Yeah, the the people in government. People, no, that's a big that's a big number. The, the, the U.S. government is the largest organization in the world. It, uh, people getting paychecks, right? Uh, so they worry about that. Apparently, the uh, the media worries about it because that makes for a story. Um, nobody has. Well, well, the people in Congress will get paid regardless. And that's the other thing, too, everybody. Whenever they quote unquote shut down government, it doesn't really shut down. And yeah. everybody gets their back pay. So, right. You may go they, a week or so. They may defer. They may be deferring. But so the fight is going on. And apparently, there have been a couple of small wins. And, and with this, this group getting some momentum. So this moron, um, Bowman, is, is, is he's Congressman Bowman, and you may have seen this guy. He's a belligerent piece of – he he's, he's a large guy, and he likes to stand outside in the hallways and yell. He likes to confront. He likes to confront other congressmen. He, he's, he, and you can tell he's one of these, one of these guys, yeah, you ain't no – you ain't – you what you dress in a suit being all big, bold up. You know, he's a big guy, you know, talking tough. I don't – you know, I, my 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 congressman's uh, nail, Troy Troy Nails. He's the next sheriff, right? He's not a big guy. He's a, he's a he's a you know he's he's solid, but he's not a big guy. I guarantee you that guy's never going to square up with him. You know, he's he's you know he's he he's a he likes to square up and and yell at sixty five year old yeah pasty guys. But um, so anyway, this cat uh, gets the bright idea. He's going to slow down the votes or stop the votes and. He pulls the fire alarm in the uh, in the stairwell of of Congress. Hey, hey uh, a true fact, everybody. That's that's against the law. Right. <laughs> that's that's a U.S. congressman breaking. A couple good things here. It's on film. Now, here's what's interesting. We have the footage of that within 12 seconds. <laughs> you leave cocaine in the White House, we can't figure it out. <laughs> right. Right. We have. Could have been anybody. Yeah, footage of that guy pulling the uh... – so then – and I didn't get the whole story whether or not they actually arrested him or what happened, but uh, he I did. Don't... Okay. Well, that ought to be – that would be great. I, if They hit the whole deal. If you did that at... – you did it in your workplace, you'd probably get fired. If you did it in school, you'd get suspended. You my favorite, my no. favorite part of this is – right, here's a congressman. And I want to say somebody told me the dude's in his low 20s. He's like, and that's a that's a problem in itself, right? I mean, I think I he's in the wrong, squad. Yeah, but that's that's a that's a good place to be. Uh, I thought that was only uh, women. I guess not. Uh, maybe maybe uh, identifies. Well, put it this maybe way. They, maybe they, identifies. I don't know. They maybe, said uh, you know the queen of the squad, AOC, was defending him and thought it was a good idea. It's a good idea to pull the fire yeah. on. Yeah. To 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 cause to cause havoc and break the laws. You're willing good. to do. You're willing to do whatever you can to save the nation. Wow, she, she, I, so, I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly sure if the term submaronic is is a real. <laughs> I've used it before. I've said some somebody's submaronic, but if it is an actual word, there you go. There's the poster child. But my favorite part was after, apparently, the excuse given, or by by either his staff or whatever was that he didn't think pulling the fire alarm. Which set off the fire alarm in Congress. So the argument of a uh, a congressman, an elected yeah. congressman, is that he's too stupid to understand how a fire alarm works. See, I'd at least go on with you know I had a rock in my shoe and I was leaning up against the wall to you know to take it out and my hand accidentally hit it. I was just fascinated by, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't, I, yeah, so, so here for alarm. What the heck does that mean? So, so, it, so if it makes you feel any better, America. That's one of the guys that gets to vote on, yeah, where, where your money goes and, and what gets, so yeah, there, there, there you go. Um, so, so good luck, America. We're, um, uh, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll pull up We're and see in good what, hands. Yeah, I've got yeah, I've got a, the computer screen I have over here has a picture of him. Yeah, right there, clear as day, just yanking on that bad boy. But um, no, I had I I'd start off saying it was an interesting uh, to get through the week, and I'm very fortunate. I don't I I, I guess I'm fortunate 
in the past anyway i've not been uh, very sick sickly i get you know like anybody else i get you know, i get sniffles and whatever yeah. but i don't normally get um i rarely get bedridden where like man right i can tell you last time i was sick to yeah. the point that you know I, I had to refrain from doing anything I came back from, uh, like I said, I came, I went to Wisconsin. I didn't bring back an official um, uh, souvenir of Wisconsin. So my unofficial souvenir was some some virus. I don't know. It could have been a stomach virus. Could have been the crud. Whatever. The crud. You know, you get you get you start running around a fever. That that's the thing you can tell. Like, okay, I don't typically run fever, and I ran mm -hmm. fever for about about two days, about three days. Um, which which reminds you of just how i don't say wimpy but how man being sick sucks like you, you take for granted and there's even a difference between being in pain and being sick like well, being just like the when you have fever and everything it's just like you just uh, you feel tired you feel just lethargic then you Are feel you like sometimes me? you feel good enough it's like well i ought to be doing something or i should go do this and then as soon as you start as soon as you start doing anything right your body comes up and says you an idiot you know you or you feel good for like four minutes five minutes enough to make you think ah oh. and then all of a sudden you say, oh no that was a bad idea but um <laughs> yeah you're like me i i try and it's probably not smart to do i'll try not to take anything for a while like if I'm, even if i get even if you know i'm feverish it, it depends because yeah i'm not big on taking medicine unless it yeah i don't sleep. well and i don't know it's like a, maybe it's a wives tale and we just fool ourselves and thinking like well you know your body's going to fight it off and it's better for your body mm -hmm. to fight off. And, and, but then you take a, you, then you pop a couple of Tylenol and it's like, Oh man, it feels good not to be burning. <laughs> right? I, oh wait. So as well, much as I don't I, trust I, medicine. Yeah. It's got to it, put it this way. I think it's got to work itself out. You still got to, you know, I think the, the medicine will just numb the, yeah, whatever you, the, the, your, the side effects of it. But, but but the other thing now is, and it's just, they've done this to us over the past few years is they've turned COVID into the xerox of illnesses mm -hmm. yeah. you can't tell Phoenix. anybody you can't tell anybody that you know you're not feeling well you're sick you know you're down oh it's got cold oh, got the new strain got the new strain man no i got the future strain that's how that's how advanced <laughs> i am i got the one and i don't think it is but you know what i you know what and that that's where that's where you start making those calls i don't get these people that as soon as they get a runny nose. They get whatever, you know. Man, first thing they want to do is head on over and get something shoved up their nose. Uh, and because my my thing is always okay. What if it? What if it is? What are you doing different? Right, right. Nothing, nothing. The only thing you're doing is calling in work different and hoping you don't have to go to work. <laughs> Use that magic word, huh? <laughs> yeah. And now when I don't go to work, what that means is I got to work more when I go back. Well, I had to do a few things. I was lucky. I did not have to travel. Um, cause I usually say, I, you know, usually get by, I've, I've traveled, you know, not feeling well and even had to give speeches and stuff, not feeling well. You just kind of run on adrenaline, you know, as long as you can, you can do it. A couple of days would have been, um, would have been tough, but yeah, got, got through it, bro. Here, here, here at it. I was actually, um, it's been a long day today. I was at a, a, uh, Mexican, brunch uh birthday brunch nice <laughs> my, nice my, bro my brother-in-law that's the age we're at he's there they're the guys that uh, you know got me all those signs i showed you you know the yeah. for my birthday yeah i just turned around and just gave him a gift card for ammo <laughs> you know so equally as appreciated i'm e sure equally as like, that's, that's that, and he, he did that's it so man I was going to spend some effort and time trying to trying to figure out what you uh you know what you want, but I know you love nothing more than bullets. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. here's oh. here, here's the ammunition gift card. Um, yeah. did did well, some of that. Well, I drove to. I got up early this morning and went pick up my dad and drove to Mississippi for uh, it's called cruising the coast. Apparently, around you know the Biloxi Gulfport area is big for car type stuff because you remember in the summer i talked right. about this i stumbled across jeeping for the coast uh and then there's also an event there called scraping the coast for people who have those low rider cars that scrape the roads uh but this is like an eight day long 
it's almost like a car festival where you've got thousands of cars hmm. uh, from all over. And I've always wanted to take my dad, and I almost didn't because, you know, I, I religiously watched the Saints games. Uh, <laughs> he missed but, a heck yeah, of a one today. Yeah, God bless me today. Let me miss that one. Uh, but, you know, I told him about it last week, and he seemed excited. So I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to do this you know, with my dad. And so uh, we went down there, and, and his whole quest was to find – every car he's ever owned like through the 50s and in 60s but most importantly the car he learned to drive in which was a 1947 ford fairlane wow um so we would drive around apparently there's a lot more people that restore chevrolets than fords you know you got all the 57 chevys and stuff like that okay. so he was complaining he was said he was gonna write a letter to ford to know why that none of the <laughs> So few of their cars were, were still around. You're gonna write a letter to Ford wanting <laughs> yeah. to know why. Yeah. Eighty eighty years later. Yeah. Or so, seventy years uh, or whatever it is that. Uh, yeah. Funny. But so, you know, again, eighty nine. I was starting to get tired walking around. I said, "Hey, man, how you doing?" <laughs> you know, we, we walked for a good two hours, um, just like it's like all in downtown golf. But as we were heading back to the car, one of the last streets we went down, there it was. He found No, good yeah. for you. Good yeah. for him. So uh, this was a convertible version. His wasn't a convertible. Uh, but so I took a pic couple pictures of him standing by the car. Then I took some pictures of him telling other people that that was the first car, he, uh, the car he learned to drive in. Good, man. Your dad the kind, yeah. your, dad, your dad the kind that just, uh, just, just, we just walk up and talk to people or just oh heck yeah dude yeah, yeah. in a minute this yeah, your car <laughs> that's me i think it drives my wife crazy it it uh we but i just do and, but it, and, and and more often but than stuff not, like that i'm cool with that where it's you know, okay okay there's a common thing to talk about if yeah you know, if i'm looking at this thing and admiring it you're sitting there well i'm all right go and ask you about it right right yeah because i'm no, basically I'll, complimenting I'll, you yeah, I typically you walk will, up to I, strangers anywhere though. Yeah, well, it it depends. Uh, what, you know what the situation is, how bored I am, uh, how bored somebody else appears to be. Because more often than not, you know, you strike up a conversation with somebody and it ends up being cool. They they right. like people would rather talk than be bored. Um, you figure out a way to pay somebody a compliment. They love you, man. Well, today, so we we went this afternoon to, uh, so, so my, the the play that my son's been in. Mm -hmm. It was the last the last performance was today. No, he was he's the swing, so he wasn't in it. But because uh, you're that supportive he, dad, man. Well, and you know it's a good play, and we did. Well, that's us, mm -hmm. man. That's us, dude. We, we we're on a team. We're on a team. Like the dude, theater. I went, Riley missed the swim meet last week because she was on a recruiting trip. I got up and went to the swim meet. There you go. Support and people the looking team. at me saying, "What are you doing here?" I said, "Bro, I'm I'm for the team." That's right. I'm all about the team. I'm not really, but I'm all about the team. <laughs> it's like, man, this thing not over yet. I got to go. I know it is getting wrong, but uh, so yeah, no. So this it's it's called uh, AD Players. It's it's uh, it's in Houston. Very and just dawned on me today. I mean, the facility is amazing. It's just a beautiful theater, and uh, you know. I, for a guy like me that pays attention to a lot of stuff, I don't pay attention to some pretty basic stuff. And I was you know, asking my wife, I was like, you know, they must have some big dollar, like some, you know, somebody had to. Uh, some big backers. Some backers. And then as I walked by, and again, I'd been in this theater several times now, just not noticing the sign is the whatever and whatever McNair, you know, the, the owners of the football team and stuff. Now I guess they get their name everywhere. But it's like, oh, okay, yeah. It's football money built this thing, man, or oil money. Man, it's called a tax but, deduction built that thing. But uh, well, well, you know what? That's okay. No, but, but a that's lot of cool people too. like that. A lot of people that big money, they're into the arts. Uh, and, hey, what yeah. would you rather them do? Would you rather them get a tax break and and, yeah. and build some cool stuff, yeah. or give the money away to you know? Well, you know, they 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 do need some more bullets in Ukraine, so maybe they need. <laughs> um, well, but. But Maybe today, because they're, from what I heard, they're using some of that money just to prop up their economy. But I digress. Well, you know, who's going to begrudge him that one? Who's mm. going to begrudge him that? Uh, but today, so we're sitting there today, get our seats. And I just turn around and 
the right behind us, and I recognized, uh, you know, look like guy. I recognize that guy. I don't know, I don't, I don't know who he is, but I recognize that guy. That's a guy. Who is that? You know, and then it drives my wife crazy when I'm doing that because I'm not very uh, shy about kind of turning around. You know, I'm not gonna stare too much, but I'm like, I knew that guy. And she's like, stop, shut up. I know it. I think that's the director. Now pull out the um. Of the director of the play, yeah. Oh, the facility, yeah. okay. Yeah, of the, of the of the of the play. So I just kind of wait, and he was sitting there, and I don't know who he was he was with, and I just kind of so, hey man, you know me. I just leaned back and uh, waited to make eye contact with one of them, and there was this lady in the side, and I said, "Is that guy? Uh, is that the guy? The same one in this book?" She she said, "Yeah." I said, "Oh," and then I told him, I said, "Hey, we're Jesse's parents," and there he then he was like, "Oh." You see, yeah. now that's a good move because that's that's getting points for Jesse. If the dude well, likes you, he'll he well, he likes Jesse, which was great too. He's basically, and I said, the best compliment ever. He said, he made me the comment. He goes, Man, your son's a soldier. So that guy, I came in, it, it was not, it was not not notice of how hard this guy like because he he's the 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 swing, but he went to right. every show. He went to every show. He went to every practice. I mean, he's always there running a through team it. player. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. You kind of hope that stuff still matters, you know, yeah. in the end that whenever they cast something down the down the line. But, yeah, I, I do. The, you know, you think I'm going to be sitting in front of the director of the play? Now, even it's, it's the last, you know, it's the last The show closed today. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it, everybody's on to something else. He starts uh, he starts another play tomorrow, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, I'm not going to I'm not going to. I always, I always, it could I, be I like my son. When my son started working and I was looking up some of the people uh, that he worked or who worked for the same company on LinkedIn, he got aggravated with me because saying, look, they're, now they're going to know you're checking them out. Okay. So? Okay. It's not stalking, just checking. Yeah, right, that's it. Talk, and, and, and you know, and if, if the guy, if the guy would have not been talkative or would have been uh, whatever, then, then so fine. Said good job and turn back around. That's how I started off before I said anything else. I, I, I did. I said, I said, oh, I just want to say this is this is the third time we see this play. It's amazing. So you guys have done a fantastic job. And everybody glow, glow, glow. Then you drop in, you know, where that's when he said, I thought he looked like you. Or all right, so maybe you look like him. And I'm like, whatever, I'll take it. That's, that's more of a compliment if you're saying I look like him. <laughs> um, I'll take I'll take that. But um, yeah. So that's that was the other the second part of uh, of my day before before rushing home to chat. That's right. And share get this thing done to, share you know, stuff with america right i had to yeah the nah i didn't leave biloxi early to do this but uh, you know, yeah. i would just make it i left early to make sure i got there early enough to get and, back in time and during the intermission and before you know, I'm, I'm i'm pulling up I'll, i don't look at scores but i pull up like my fantasy football stuff and i can usually see what the teams are doing you like i'll see what players and i see so i, I didn't I, while i was not watching the saints game whoo no, I listened Ooh. to it. The and when I got back to my dad's, it was probably the, yeah, I don't know, midway through the fourth quarter when they were still. I don't even remember what the score was, but I said, "Hey, I'm gonna run in and just catch the end of the game." And then I watched like one series. I said, "All right, I'm done. I'm going home." I don't. So I didn't see a single. And it's hard for me anyway. Usually, even usually because he's the Saints, so we don't get it here yeah. in Houston. We get we get the Texans. Who am Houston won? Beat the snot out of Pittsburgh. Yeah, beat this. So I I don't know what that says about Pittsburgh, but I, don't, but I thought they were doing well. There's a lot of bad football today, or a lot of bad games. I mean, I, and that's just I hadn't watched anything, but just checking the scores, a mm -hmm. lot of big gaps. Well, what I do, so I didn't see the um the game, so I did. You know where where you find all the experts? Go to Facebook. Mm -hmm. Go to go to Facebook immediately after a Saints or LSU Tiger loss. And you get to see all, all the resident experts come out. Everybody's got, and they got this guy, a friend of mine. Oh, I'm not gonna give his name because I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about. It, but he used to be a, a sports writer, and he, I, I know what he does now. But he apparently is not a sports writer anymore. But he can't help himself. When <laughs> he, he has big old paragraphs about you know the Saints and what's wrong and coaches have to go and. Uh, that seems to be a, a pretty general. Even even uh, being in the in the stadium game one, that they that they won. Um, yeah, they didn't. They hadn't played well. They just played. everybody there seemed already to be like, hey man, these coaches are just yeah. No, the um, 
Well, that's what I, I think I mentioned to you before. Uh, a while back, Dennis Allen, the Saints coach, his daughter swims for a team in New Orleans. And, you know, she'll on a fairly regular basis, you know, she did the same meets as my daughter. Um, you know, you have to get the parent timers uh, as the backup timers at the meets. And my wife was sitting on the side of uh, Dennis Allen, the Saints coach. Okay, cool. And so she was just chit chatting with him, and he talked about, uh, are they asking about recruitment? And yes, you know, said she, his daughter was looking at a, a university, I think in California. And I said, well, you should tell him that if he don't get his crap together, he can move there with her. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, by next year, I don't think he'll be here. I, I, I wouldn't, I couldn't pick him out of a lineup if I saw him. I don't, I don't. Um, Average looking dude. Um, Maybe the way to be. But then LSU was like nobody could stop nobody last night. It was just score after score after score. I was busy doing – I forget where we were, so I didn't get to see much of that. I just saw the aftermath uh, aftermath of it. I don't Look, I, I don't begrudge any people from running on the field, but it's not like – You know, didn't just – yeah. you, you just beat an already beaten LSU. Like, yeah. like and yeah. we established that this is not – 2019 you didn't right right it's yeah so i don't the, joe burrow's not walking through that door but yeah but he yeah, ain't walking yeah. through many doors today they stunk today too Dude, i'm sorry we're, I'm, bad year. I'm sorry we're doing uh you know yeah, we're going back to sports again. Talk. we're doing sports talk guy i'm sorry uh, sorry about that we just uh it's sunday and that's what uh mm -hmm. what what happens uh, so I, I did watch colorado again yesterday okay um, okay we're not gonna get away from this all right no this is just gonna be quick one thing I noticed that, you know, how during, if you watch college football, they always have a commercial for each university and Colorado university's commercial was something, you know, it's reasons to come to the universe or if it's the university of Colorado, Colorado university. I don't know which one it is. Um, prime location. Oh no. Prime research. Prime academics. Prime athletics. Yeah, it's just stop it. Stop it. There you go, man. They're all in. Two and two team. Could easily be 0 and 4. Easily. Yeah. <laughs> Could easily be. I mean, seriously. They I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna go down. I'm glad they've got the night. They're two and two, and they and apparently they made it a game yesterday, which I think says more about USC than it does about uh, yeah. Colorado. But um, you know. Whatever. Hey, it beats you know, it, it it beats worrying about the real world. It beats yeah, that's a good point. It, it beats paying attention to the stuff they're trying to uh to, to pull on us. There's something in the inter that something interesting that did happen this week. Uh worried me at first, but thankfully it worked out okay. So I'm um, uh some about uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday evening, and I get a, a phone call from my nephew, uh, one of the people that lives in the house in, in Thibodeau. And I always kind of cringe. You know what I'm saying? That's don't, uh, it's never good. Like, you know, uh, and he's like, Uncle Dave, um, I'm walking back from campus and, um, yeah, the, the, the yard is flooded and there's, so apparently there's a broken pipe somewhere. And I'm like, oh, geez. So the first thing, I don't know, this is a, this is a Cajun thing, a Bayou thing. Um, uh, I don't, it's my first, my, my first question is always, Where's that break? Is it on the city side or is it on my <laughs> yeah. side? Right? Because it's still, there's going to be a repair that has to happen. But, man, I hope it's on the city side. Because if it's on the other side of the water meter, that's them they got to fix that. All right? If it's on my side of the water meter, I'm responsible for that. So yeah, I was it's just on that asking, side, you get some nice fresh sod and everything where they dig it up. Well, now, what I didn't wasn't thinking about didn't realize at the time and i shouldn't that you know my both because my son was also there he just mm -hmm. got back from work and um that they don't apparently know the amount of water that would come out of a normal pipe the amount of water that was flowing on this water it, so the entire you'd have to see the house you know the house mm -hmm. the front the front yard must cover yeah that's a big old yard it's huge. It's huge. It was half underwater. Half the driveway was underwater. 
the street, the, 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 the ditch across Audubon at Nichols filled up. Water ran down All Audubon. All from that yard? Onto Menard. The, the, the barn behind our house uh -huh. was about ankle deep in water. Uh, it was a 12-inch water main. The, the, yeah, I was saying that's not a water pipe. That's a water main yeah. that, that, that went off. Uh, shut Nichols down for two days. So it wasn't, was it on you? No, on your it property? wasn't mine. I okay. ain't got, I ain't got, I ain't got a 12 inch water main on my property. It was, <laughs> and it was actually across the street. Now, uh, Armand, not, not the, you know, it was, cl but close enough, that kind of volume of water yeah. and just flooding over the street into our yard. And, um, but yeah, so they, they all kind of sat outside in, in, uh, chairs and watched, uh, but it, it took them dang near 18 hours, 24 hours. To, they had to bring in back hose. They had to. When did they? How long after that did they turn it off? Uh, the water. Yeah. Or did uh, it keep flowing? It eventually. It eventually. Um, they eventually either slowed it or stopped it. Yeah. I don't know if the entire city. I mean, I don't know what parts of the city lost water, but obviously, uh, the next day, the next morning, they uh, they, they 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 called off uh, ca uh, campus. Uh, wow. Uh, they had yeah. no water on campus. Or it's something about standing water, man. You know, it's just in interesting to watch. In my childhood, that would have been a dream. I'd have been Dude. out there, especially because you knew it was relatively clean water, right? Yeah. It was coming right out the pipe. Still and it hot. Was like, like a lake. I'd have been out there with little boats and playing around mm -hmm. and, and uh yeah. but yeah, all the neighbors all the neighbors came out and uh that's what they said. They were just hanging out with the neighborhood. <laughs> it's, like, uh. it's a Block flood party. So it wasn't technically it wasn't technically our pipe, but uh there you go. Enough enough to shut a university down for two days. Gotta have water. There you go. There you go. But uh I think there's so we had something in Baton Rouge this week. It didn't shut the university down, but uh shut the bridge down for a while. Uh this was one night this week. This guy, um I guess is like a um what would you call it? Like a um not a cattle trailer, but something like a cattle trailer. I guess you know an animal trailer, a livestock trailer. Okay. Uh, crossing a bridge uh, with pigs, and best most people can figure out is the back door on the trailer. Some cow somehow came open, and thirty something pigs got out of that trailer on the bridge. The really? dude never stopped. I'm thinking the pigs died from impact. Because if people would have hit pigs on the bridge, yeah, there would have been some massive wrecks. You hit a pig, you're you're doing some damage on your car. You gotta be moving pretty fast to kill a pig on impact. I mean, uh, I mean, that's not... the the dude never stopped and they never followed up on the, the story. Never got followed up on. Rick, if you're listening, yeah, your station ran this story, so let us know what happened. How they, yeah, what, how could how you drop pigs? 36 pigs and not stop? Was that all the pigs? Did he have more pigs? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. They never talked. The story didn't have anything. They didn't know who the guy was. Come on, Rick. Y'all got to get on that. What do you mean? Inquiring and minds want to know. I, I guess when the pigs, you know, hit, it, it, it must have, you know, the impact must have cleaned out their intestines. Oh, no. Yeah. So, uh, so it was dead pigs and, and pig poop all over the bridge. Yeah. yeah you know, somebody's got to be picking those up. You know, you know, somebody, you know, like on the bayou, you hit a, you hit an alligator, fresh alligator. Somebody's on that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I told my dad that he said, "Oh, I ought to pick that up." I, somebody just gave you a gift. Yeah, this girl who works for me was hit a deer one day, and she called you know, in the in the company uh, vehicle, and she called me freaking out. I said, "Oh, somebody's gonna stop in a minute. They're gonna stop to get that deer. You just get them to help." <laughs> Did they? I think the firemen came and they they helped her and they took the deer. I just want to. I I'm trying to figure out how because 36 pigs are not cheap. I mean, you just dropped. Uh, no, that's 30. what we talking about. You know, that's a lot of money. So unless the guy's thinking, if I stop, I'm responsible for. Right, that's the whole thing because I've heard stories. You know, I mean, growing up where we grew up, you know, you know pastures and livestock and stuff, and you know, there was always stories that if somebody hit a cow that got out of a pasture nobody ever claimed the cow, the cow. yeah yeah because they would also be claiming the liability oh huh. 
I mean, they're not b- b- wild driving. So my uh, my brother in law was telling telling us this at lunch today. So he he's the band director of a big band, and they do they did a big competition, big huge competition in Houston yesterday, and uh, they did real well. So congratulations t- uh, to them. Uh, but I mean, like a big I, school, I, high school band. Yeah, big high school. I mean, the high schools here are, are, are massive. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and do and do the bands, universities. People don't. People just don't know. Uh, even like I mean, I went to South Lafouche, and South Lafouche has a nice, nice band. And I'm sure Thibodeau does as well. And Ed Ed White, I know, has a nice. But the bands here, the Quad A schools and Five A schools, man, they're big, hundreds, hundreds. They've got they've got their own semi tractor trailer to to bring equipment. I I don't know how many buses they use, but it three or four of just just with the band and he was talking about one of the drivers and apparently she worked for the I guess she works for the for the for the district but he had the worst bus driver ever she was in comp she was ter- and he, he actually drives a bus he can he does on the spare time like can mm-hmm. make extra money you know i like he's a hustler he understands how the how the system works and eventually when you retire you get the the average of your highest paid years so whatever whatever money you can throw in mm-hmm in a year yeah, he's just driving that up pick up pick up a pick up a couple bus routes right anyway so uh he knows how to drive these big old buses and he said she was driving and he, where she kept missing she got lost a couple times it's hard to get lost here y'all i mean it really is it's an interstate it's it it's that way go you just but so missed the exit whatever and decided to turn into a uh, uh some parking lot to to turn around and he was as she started to do it he was like you can't you can't make you won't make this you can't make and he he says you better keep you're gonna you're gonna hit that ditch you're gonna hit that ditch he said man hang on a sec here he she hit the ditch bottomed the bus out the bus rocked okay and they were the lead bus he said so the buses behind them they were following so they could see and they told them after man your bus (laughs) <laughs> like, it, like serious angle like yeah because if the front wheel's going down the ditch i mean the back end that's and long then, back or, or, or sideways up. like like it rocked it you know and he said man i thought we surely broke this bus um but, but miraculously gets there she drove it out apparently it recovered i guess so not the way you're supposed to do it might have caused major damage to the bus came dang near turning the bus over yeah, full make all the kids get in that back corner and hit make the, the wheels <laughs> full of band kids traction. But uh, and he said their show was up in this place called the Woodlands, which is north of here, mm-hmm. north of yep. Houston. It's on I forty five, north of Houston. And he said it was they have these super long days. Their first performance is something like eight in the morning. Their last performance is like nine at night. Uh, and and yeah, they they do different things in the day. Man, I I I've known people in the the LSU band. And I promise you, they practice as much as the football team. Oh, some it's insane. Yeah, it it, 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 it it's uh, it's crazy. But this so this was a competition day, and um, no, he did something cool that you know. Again, this is when I guess you have some funds to do things, and you have you know parental support because you're talking hundreds of kids, and he rented a ballroom at a hotel room middle of the day. And they, 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 so they had to compete in the morning. Then you have to wait all day long till the night to do whatever. So they went to the ballroom. Uh, they had stuff laid out and they let the kids take four hours, take naps. Uh, they brought food in just to get them out the sun and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, to compete that night. But he said, so they did well. They, they, they finished well. And he said he was exhausted, gets back on the bus, finally, just like, you know, oh. and he said he fell asleep just for a few minutes on, on the, on the bus, just, you know, put his head down. He said he looks up. He's like, "Where the hell are we? Cause we, where are we going? Like we going to? They were on the way to Dallas." He was. And he said. He said he, he stopped the bus driver. Said, "Where are Same we going?" Was, <laughs> yes. He said, "Where are we going?" Just, uh, I'm not sure. I got lost. He's like, "How do you get lost? You had a choice. That's one, yeah, one Dallas way. or Houston. Dallas or Houston. Where do we come from? You, you know." So he said, "Say, I wasn't so exhausted. I'd have just told us, get out. Let me, let me. I'll, I'll drive it back." But you know, yeah. So then, he, then he, then he reminded me. He said, "Man, don't take, don't take this wrong." He says, um, 
but bus drivers are driving a bus for a reason. I said, well, okay. I, get it. I, get it. <laughs> yeah. I said, we all want it. We all want to think it's the retired person who, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're just trying to help out that retired engineer, that, retired engineer yeah. that, 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 uh, yeah. right. Who's just, you know, just, yeah. just like being D around didn't kids. Wanna, right. Didn't want to go for the, the, the greeter at Walmart figured he right, could help right. out the school. So they're just, yeah, that's what we want to think the bus drivers are. You know, they're just people who are just, man, I love doing this. I love, you know, not like, Oh, this was, um, okay. But, yeah, but we, they made we it. Had so the, the, the bus drivers, uh, in the parish, my wife teaches in, uh, had a sick out a couple of weeks ago or whatever. Cause you know, they want, um, air conditioning on the bus. Uh, look, I get did, that those buses are hot. Who did this? The bus drivers for the the school, the whole parish. Um, but I think about thirty or forty percent of the bus drivers didn't run their routes, but only like five percent of the students missed school. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we'll get we we'll get that. No big deal. Uh, we never had we never had air conditions on. No, on... dude, I didn't have air conditioning in the classroom until I got to college. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, we 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 talked about that before. It was, it was mm -hmm. a South Lafouche, you know. South and man, you would get a chill in there, dude. You, if you at the end of the day, that was the the worst thing. At the end of the day, was to be on the second row, in line of a fan. You got the fan, but it's like at the end of the day, so you getting the funk up from the person in the front <laughs> of you. Oh God! Yeah, I remember. I remember coming in from. Um, Think of things that just always stay with you forever. Elementary school, we had trailers, we had metal buildings, right, at uh, Galleon Elementary. You know, AC, you had maybe a fan up, like the mounted to the wall kind of fans. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, so I think sometimes they swear they, they would. No, swear. I, I didn't oscillate. Didn't no moving at all. They'd open the windows and. I think we had that, but no, I remember coming back in from recess. Like afternoon recess, and you coming in dripping sweat, sitting at a desk, just like you can't even Continuing touch paper because to it'll sweat. It'll stick to you, man. Yeah. Get out, get out your composition and start doing your spelling words. No, man. <laughs> the, page, the page is sticking to my hand. I can't. Yeah. No, I don't. The I think my old high school is air conditioned now. Yeah, but you stop. But yeah, you, you know what? You eventually stop sweating because your body acclimated. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, so again, you, you you do what you're used to doing. My 1969 Plymouth Fury Three had no air conditioning. I mean, it had it, it just didn't work. <laughs> it's like didn't have that kind of money. Didn't have. Uh, so. We didn't. We, we didn't have change the. Uh, I even. Yeah, you know what's funny? What funny thing was? I don't even think we ever even checked what it was. You know, it could have been. It might have been a five dollar repair. I had that car for probably well, five that, that years. That was that was luxury. That was luxury. Mm -hmm. You didn't. You didn't. You hadn't stepped up to to earning that. I, I did have. A, I, I think I did have heat in the winter. So that was right. Yeah. Could, yeah. Yeah. But now, dude, before I got rid of my truck, the my heater was out. That was miserable. That's pretty bad. Uh, oh yeah. It was, what was worse was when it would get you know. Uh, when the windshield would get fogged up. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. You, you, you could jacket it up and put gloves on, but you can't make that windshield clear up. I had, we, we, all of a sudden we were scratching, scratching memories of cars and car issues. I had a Volkswagen Jetta and I actually love that. I remember car. that. I remember that Volkswagen. I, lo I love that car back in the day. Um, but it, apparently they all had the same problems. They, they that year, you know, like, that that model because I mm -hmm. ran into a guy, a doctor at, at Lumcon actually who had the same year or one or two years from me on that that Jetta, and we all had the same problems. The same things were broken on it. The same things, and this one somewhere behind the dashboard. And man, it is so cool when stuff breaks behind, behind the, dash the dashboard. Oh, yeah. and and I would start my my windshield would would get would, would fog right, and, I, and even when I ran it, I couldn't. And it smelled weird. It always smelled like, why am I smelling antifreeze? It smells like antifreeze to me. And it was. It was something dripping in there. And, man, that thing was never. So I learned to drive you know, in one hand with a napkin in this hand doing <laughs> doing this, man. It's like, oh, you know.
We, 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 yeah, I forgot because I think that's the problem I had on my truck, to be honest with you. Um, because it's something where the coolant flows that gets clogged up. And so I basically just did a bypass on it, um, which made I didn't get any heat. Um, but fortunately, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> You're a Jeep family now, man. Nay, nay. But, um, yeah, talking about quick repairs and stuff. So I talked a while back about the, I changed the garage door opener because mine, I think, got a power surge with a close lightning hit or something. And then I, whatever, it, it worked, but you had to, I was told I had to balance the door, which I couldn't figure out what that meant. I thought it was something on the door itself. So I called a guy and uh, I finally connected with him Friday and he came out. Older fella, I'm guessing he owned, yeah, it's Pat's garage door. I'm pretty sure it was Pat. Um, but so he, yeah, nice fella, but comes in and says, yeah, you could just hire me to do the whole job. I said, yeah, but I priced y'all on like 750 bucks. I, I bought the the motor for like $200. And, and so I, I broke out that, you know, I'm, I'm cheaper than I am lazy, bro. <laughs> um, and he said, well, you got a better motor. And I said, well, I got the motor. I just got a motor like the one that was on here. And he said, yeah, but you got a better one. I oh, said, yeah. well, well, no offense, but the, the, the reason I called you is because there's a sticker on that motor that said, Pat's garage doors. So I'm pretty sure you installed this one originally. Oh, I probably <laughs> did. They, they just want his cheap stuff. Um, Ooh, Pat sounds like an ass. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then, so he yeah. gets, again, like I said, I thought it'd have to adjust something with the balance of the weight on the door. So now he's just pushing buttons on the, on the, the motor thing. And I said, oh man, I'm going to kick myself in the butt if it just takes two minutes to fix this thing. And he said, that's because I know that's why I get paid to do this. I know what I'm doing. Sure. And and it took him about two minutes. And I said, Man, I knew I should have just looked up on YouTube how to do this. <laughs> and he said, Why didn't you? I said, Cause I got tired of messing with it. <laughs> but then I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe you know, we're kind of joking around. You know, maybe he'll cut me a deal since it only took two minutes. I said, well, All right, man, how much I owe you? 150. 150. Yeah. Which was the min and I knew, I mean, that was the, the minimum service charge, but it's like, man. Kind of wish something else was wrong. <laughs> Come on, Pat. Stop being such a chew. <laughs> you could have paid me $700 and do this. I right. Know. I even gave him the old one. I said, hey, look, I don't know if you can redo something with that. You're welcome to have it. Since you just told me that it's not a very good motor. Yeah. <laughs> that you apparently installed. But, yeah. hey. Well, that's that's the the smartest marketing. You know, we talk about marketing and, and uh the most effective marketing for any garage door opener plumber whatever is leaving a sticker on right. whatever it is you just fixed because you never think about it like right. who the hell knows who you know no i, I don't have a garage door open garage, garage door repair man no freaking idea i just have a sticker somebody was smart enough along the way to stick got a, a sticker on my breaker box outside if ever i got an electrical problem there's, I'm there's just calling a sticker them. I guarantee you, when we moved into this house, the first few plumbers we used, it was that, you know, under the sink, on the uh, uh, disposal. Yeah. yeah. I guess they've been in this house before. Call, you know, call. Yeah. At uh, least they're not coming in criticizing the other guy. But Pat did. Criticizing yourself there, Pat. Yeah. So. yeah I'm cheaper than I am. I'm cheaper than I'm lazy, Pat. That's right. Pat, you ever watched yeah. the podcast? You wouldn't know that about me. <laughs> but now I have a garage door open. That works. Congratulations. Connected that's, that's, to my uh, phone. Yeah. I don't want it on, on my phone. I am um, I don't know. I, I, uh, when I had mine worked on, and this is, you know, and I, I understand it's their job, and he was giving you grief about whatever. It's, it's, everybody wants to upsell you everything, and it just ticks me off, right? Like, when I was, the time I had mine repaired, and it might have been the spring, I forget. That's one thing, when the spring goes, it's, it's, it's it's that's that's game over like you cannot lift that door without the spring no. it's just it's it's just not gonna happen um so i had to have that done and the guy was trying to uh, he's looking at my the the rollers wanted to like change the rollers on my um you know and, and well you know this is the these are sort of like original and you know these new these new uh fiberglass blah 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 and i'm just like dude you know what's gonna happen hey, when it breaks I'll give you a call. <laughs> I'll give you a call. 
I, I'm not. I'm not really yeah, into. I'm not prevent- doing preventative maintenance on the I'm garage. I'm not doing prevent exactly. I, I. So you want me pre-spending money? Yeah. <laughs> on something the, that. My mother-in-law does that with her car. Um, where you know she goes to some guy who's yeah, you know, he's like it's probably the highest paid, highest charger mechanic in town, and like she won't go, like she's scared to go get her oil changed someplace else because he'll be mad. Um, oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but then it's is he gosh, making a payment? Is he making yeah. payments yeah. on the car? <laughs> right. Then I don't it's think he has. A, like, I don't think he gets a vote. I'm a, I'm gonna have to spend twenty five hundred dollars on my car next year. I said, why? And it's all oh, because look, this is the list of maintenance that it's due. Oh man, that's the best. And it's the you know the, the time you got to replace the time chain and time and chain and all that. I said, you know what? I probably own twenty cars in my life, and you know how many time and chains I've changed on my cars? One. And you know when I changed it when it broke. Nobody does that crap ahead of time. But they'd always, they'd always scare you saying, oh, man, if that thing breaks, it's right. going to throw off and it could totally yeah. damage them. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. And if that happens, that's, 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 that's what happens. I get that. And I don't mind the guy that's place, uh, place uh, in town here. Uh, not, I'm, I, I can literally, I have dropped off my car and walked home before. It's about a mile, mm-hmm. mile and a half. And I can, I can walk along a, a canal. I don't even have to walk on a road to come back. Right. Yeah. So. Um, and they're pretty high tech now with, um, everything that's scanned and done. So I'll bring the car in for whatever I'm bringing it in for. Could be to rotate the tires, could be to, um, whatever, change the oil, whatever. And then I'll get a text back from them with, and it always has the, uh, I don't know they call it emergency, but the priority the whatever, mm-hmm. oh, the, the red, and then they suggested, and then the future, and with pictures of various parts of the car, and you know why? Yeah, and it's always this 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 freaking buffet of. Well, they all do the you know the eleven point the complimentary eleven point inspection, which means we're looking for other stuff to charge you for. And I'm always like, man, I don't, I'm, I'm, t- I'm not changing the uh, inside air conditioning filter anymore. Sorry, bro, not doing it. <laughs> not doing that you know they they they, 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 they find these random filters that i'm like wait, wait, wait where is that filter no right it, it's you know hey we got a special on this today which 25 dollars. you know your uh your brake fluid is showing up as blah 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 that's a problem i i yeah, my thing was all still working you know um like in the old days it was when you when you heard your brake start to grind that's when that's when that's when um so yeah, it's and, and I, I understand why, and, and some are better than others at, 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 uh, at no, that. No, but stuff. it's you know, it's just it's annoying. When you go in, and not that I would go to get my windshield wiper changed, uh, the blades, but yeah. Hey, while we were changing the windshield wiper blades, we noticed that your brake pads are really worn. Yeah. They really got to take the wheels off to notice what the brake pads are worn. How'd you, how'd you notice that? Because <laughs> we're good at what we do, bro. Yeah. They're like Pat. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the they're the they're the Pat. Of mechanics. We get paid to do this. What happened to me? It, uh, it was this before. It was actually on my way to Wisconsin. Oh, when I'm in my car to drive to the airport. Be careful what you ask for, right? So I'm um, morning traffic in Houston is just miserable, and it's yeah, you know, bump to bumper to bumper, bumper to bumper. And I'm just like, uh. And then finally, I get off uh, tollway, and we start moving. We probably get up to 40, 45 miles an hour. I'm driving. I'm in a good mood, doing whatever, sipping on a coffee. I didn't even have to look up. Whatever that was just broke my windshield. I know it. And I looked up two stars, man, like 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 right in the center of the um, on your car or the my car? car, my oh. car. I mean, first thing in the morning, heading off to go to, to go get on a plane. And I, it's already starring. It's already yeah. like I got the so I you know, call my wife. Say, oh crap, this sucks. Just ask her, and she 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 lined up safe. So I got the safe light guy. They come out. They come out on the Friday. Yeah. I get back. Yeah. I didn't get back till midnight that night. That's the other thing, by the way. I don't. I don't get. I don't land till midnight. I don't get back to my house till one one something in the morning. I got the safe light repair guy. They send you the thing. They're coming on the Friday, right? And the window is between eight a.m. and five p.m. 
That's that's a bit, yeah. Yeah, guess what? So, so get so guess when I get the phone call in the freaking morning. 7 30 in the morning, Mr. Martin. You're my first stop. I'm on my way. The one morning, like I said, I felt like I just going to sleep. So of course I'm gonna be your first stop in the morning. But hey, God bless America. Come on, at least they come to your house. But here's yeah. the deal, man. And they, I guess they do as good a job as anybody. But then you you signing all this stuff and he's explaining, you know, oh, it still could do this. Could. Basically, they 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 wiped their hand. There's no guarantee on any of this crap. And he he filled it in, but then they said, Well, you're still gonna see, and and you do, you can still see where, you know, there was a they bubble. Fill it in, so it's not supposed to split, I guess. And I can still doing. and when the light and it says, and when the light catches it a certain way, you still see some lines. You know what I'm like? We, we I think basically what they do is is drill some holes in it. And then put fingernail polish in it. Oh, what they or do, some, man. some type of resin. Two hundred something bucks. Two hundred something bucks to to kind of, kind of maybe fix the. Uh, but I guess it's first world problem. You know, back in the day, bro, you just had a crack windshield. We all drove crack windshield cars. Right, man, it could be like a spider web on there. You were still, you just look through the right spot. Man, exactly, exactly. My 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 uh my truck that I eventually gave to my son that he eventually got in a wreck in while we were doing a podcast. <laughs> uh, man, I had a crack all the way across that windshield for a couple of years until I think my wife got embarrassed that I was driving a I was driving a truck with a big old crack windshield. She's like, yeah, my like wife a... had, has one on which it's probably 10 inches long and here it can't be longer than eight inches um, oh yeah, but yeah it's yeah, way yeah. like on the passenger side in the bottom corner and i said just go find some dude just go yeah you know, don't go to these main people with and if he gives you grief ask him if you give him another 20 he'll do it and they did, did it so. <laughs> yeah here you go yeah Money i said makes... if not i'm gonna call my guy and get one under the table Money makes everything better man Mm -hmm. worst comes to worst comes to worst call pat yeah Pat got you <laughs> pat, pat, pat will fix you up man pat will fix you up i tell you what man Pro hey after after a, a week of low energy coming back kind of got through an hour yeah man that, yeah bad football weekend you know you on the you know with the crud yeah yeah you're pretty, well, come you're a pretty good job i think we're on the back end of the crud you get people that, that that tell you, and my wife, God, God love her. She she uh, she concerned about me, but I think either she doesn't believe me, or doesn't listen when she asks me how I'm doing. You okay? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, three minutes later, you all right? Um, I'm I'm as good or better than last. Yeah, last I think it's it, it's a conversation starter it's, you know, um, a mindless thing when i got home this afternoon my wife said you know how, yeah, how are you good good and i promise you a minute later how are you i said as opposed to yeah, you know, the last minute <laughs> i said I don't, nothing's changed i'm still just sitting here uh, or and i understand why she does it Right, uh, but you were feeling poorly maybe miraculously you or, got maybe with me, it, she yeah. with me she wants to keep going over the the, the symptoms you know, it's like it's oh, we gotta go over the checklist of all right, uh huh? My head, I don't know, my ears are kind of clogged, my my throat hurts, my stomach's not too good. You know, it's like yeah, it, it's it's because I always feel like I'm reliving that stuff when I'm talking about it. You know, it's just like. <laughs> and then this is the one. It, it will if your throat's hurting. Is it hurting less? I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a, a meter. You know, to, that's how to I describe that. to people. People ask, how are you feeling? I'm like, well, compared to the way I felt two uh, days ago, uh, if 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 I was just waking up on a normal day, I'd say, oh, it sucks. I don't feel great. But compared to what I was, not running a marathon, but yeah. I'm knocking it out of the park, man. There you go. Knocking outside. it out of the park. All right. Speaking of knocking it out of the park, let's knock this one out. All right. Push the button. Get on out of here. We're going to see if any of this stuck to the magic tape in the sky, everybody. If you want to reach us, just like Prime, like just like Prime <laughs> says, ain't hard to find. Exactly. Ain't hard to find. It's Dave and Juan at protonmail.com. Dot com, and, bro. And you can reach and us. And wherever you are right now or any similar place to wherever you are right now. You found us. You found we're us. There. We're on, we're on pretty much every audio 
Yeah, every uh, platform they make. Podcast platform they got. We there. For free. We there somewhere for free. For free. Not even not even no reads. Not, 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 no. not even making yourself a through. You know. We should start just randomly picking up businesses and doing business reads for them. <laughs> This stuff you see, you like. So, hey, all right, here I'm gonna. Uh, I got a text. Speaking of reads, okay. Today, um, from the own the mother of the owner of the company that I work for. Okay. So, hey Juan, I'm wondering if you could read in God's care on Tuesday. That was it. Okay. So I'm sitting there saying, okay, well that's his mother. I got to reply. Uh, so, so then the good side of me, the, the hopeful side of me starts saying, maybe this is like some program and she wants me to come read for it and I can get out of work on Tuesday. Uh, but so then I started looking up like Googling in God's care and it's like some devotional. I guess she wants me to read like a paragraph or something to myself on Tuesday. To somebody for, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, she just wants you. She just <laughs> think you need the Lord. She just, she... I don't know. You just uh, like, well, and I was looking in the uh, directory here. You look like somebody who could use yeah, some prayer. You, you could use some reading. So there you go. So on Tuesday, I'm going to be reading that. <laughs> okay. Because she, she's a nice lady. And she's the boss's mom. She's the boss's mom. So she's putting yeah, good word for me. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Hey, everybody. We tell you every week. Mm, every week. Not a suggestion. No, it's not, not, not a we're not we're not we're not nice like Juan's boss's mom right. who's making just a, a request, right? It's not an imp, we're not implying. Mm -mm. It's a freaking it's a freaking mandate. mandate. Right? You gotta do it. The mandate, y'all. Get out there and live your best life. To. Live your best life. You know what? Maybe a great week, maybe a tough week. Get on with it, man. I had to cut all week. Then you're back at it. Oh, it's right. 100% maybe not but you know bro better still, than it was the best for what you got that do the best do the best you can with what you got where you are that's all anybody can ask that's all that's all they can ask so get out there and get out there and do that y'all get out there we're gonna try to do it ourselves all right and um hopefully we get some hopefully we get some hopefully some louisiana team wins a football game uh between now and the next time we talk yeah, maybe a high school nichols won Nichols won. Yeah, this past, there you go. Uh, Nichols won. There you go. Right there. Mm -hmm. Shout out. Shout out. So Nichols won. Congrats. And I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure some other Louisiana teams uh, uh, did, did as well. But uh, all right, guys. Have a fantastic week, and we'll circle back with you next week. Do it again. Love you, bro. Back at you, man. Yeah, so driving down yeah with my dad. So you know, after we had the obligatory weather conversation, um, yeah, he he verbally acknowledged the price at every gas station we passed. Um, uh, and compared it to you know what he typically pays, and uh, you don't need uh, you don't need an app on your phone. You got your dad with his head. All right, man. Me. He's telling me, oh man, three twenty nine. Cool. Oh, well, but that's just <laughs> that's that's just cash. Three thirty nine if you use credit. <laughs> it's just cash. Walmart is like two eighty five. <laughs> um, but then the other thing is whenever you're passing through traffic, where the hell are all these people going? <laughs> yeah, Saturday Hello. is a Sunday you think they're going to church it's over go home <laughs>